It's so you're you're hitting on a topic that's near and dear to my heart. I um a few months ago did an energy conference where all we talked about a Reuters conference all, a s- central to that in every conversation was the relationship between energy and hyperscalers and how people are going to try to solve for this enormous problem. And it's just wild some of the some of the things that are going on there. So it's so interesting that you're focused and and zeroing in on that as. Um, you know, listen, it's a hurdle, but it's also an opportunity, right? Um, if you're if you're watching the right players. Um, I'll ask you about that more in a second, but just just to sort of talk about this this sort of AI spend and and what might slow it down. Um are there does everybody win in this? I don't I, I'm I'm trying to think of a really simple way to say it because I know I'm I'm thinking about people listening to this conversation and I keep coming back to the sort of valuation side and it's not just that but there are people and there are plenty of people littered all over any kind of you know financial media or fintwit or all over the place who will make an argument that this is just like an enormous AI bubble reminiscent of dot com not the same right doesn't repeat but it rhymes and that while this might be a disruptive technology there's a lot of hype and there are going to be a lot of losers in this. And there's a lot of money chasing just anybody who's throwing AI in the conversation. And I know that you understand this space so well. It, you know, it, does anything feel bubbly here? You know, for people who don't don't subscribe to you or don't understand this space as well as you do, but they're trying to think about exposure to tech. Is there any part of this universe that feels like a bubble? Yes, absolutely. I I do agree with that. I would say um, like AI software is really in this R&D stage and there are there's a lot of potential, uh, but until we start to see real revenue growth and AI numbers uh, discussed in these earnings calls, that's where I think the bubble is primarily is at the software layer uh, where the picks and shovels like NVIDIA, NVIDIA suppliers, which there are many NVIDIA suppliers, they, they really are in uh, that, that they really are down, uh, downwind from the massive CapEx spend where others are just trying to figure out where they fit in. And distinguishing that is key. It's always been key. And I really try hard to not move into a position unless they are participating, um, participating right now. Mm. And so, so two things are going on. Well, there's, there's so much going on with this AI market. One is the quants and those looking for a quick trade will rush into a stock um, that will pop the stock price. Those who aren't looking deeply at the fundamentals will say this must be an AI stock. It's up 30% today. And they'll run and rush into it. That's not our process, of course. We are, like I said, over 100 point checklist. We are going really, really deep here. And uh, off the top of my head, I can usually rattle off those with not only the most AI revenue, but AI growth, Mm -hmm. because that's something that really helps inform our portfolio positioning. And I think that piece can get really confusing I would say it's not unique to AI. We saw that with cloud. Um, mm-hmm. I remember gaming. There was a moment the gaming industry, everyone thought it was going to last forever. It didn't. Um, so people will talk about the dot com because it really was a public market uh, driven um, you know, tech trend. There's almost every tech trend, 90% fail. That's just tech. And whether you were in the private markets and you see it, or if you're in the public markets and you saw limited trends like which would be internet mobile cloud uh it's happening all the time i would say so nothing unusual there uh except knowing in or having that information as an investor would mean that your process should really be i need to find the 10 percent, and that mindset Mm. of i need to find the 10 percent 